starting up the show. And there's that. Oh, alrighty then. Um, I'm gonna have to mute all the Facebook apps. Muted. Oh, well, cause somebody's texting me on Facebook, so I'm just like, mm. oh. Muted. Deleted. Just bing. Bing. <coughs> bing. Ah, no, it's not that bing. bad. But anyway. <coughs> Sorry, we're running late, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna blame High Kick, cause he was asleep. For the most part. And, until, Amen. like, literally when we were supposed to start. I was worried there for a minute because I saw you not online. And I was like, "Oh boy, is this man gonna be dead for a while? This man is dead, indeed." But, uh, he's he's actually alive, which is uh, very good. <coughs> so, as usual, I am your host, Harper Brothers One. Welcome to Anime Talk Show Tuesday. This is episode twenty-eight. Um, and thank you for joining us. The, my co-host over there, Mister Hi King. Hello. And we're gonna get down to business to defeat the hunts. Alrighty then. <clears throat> Any anything you wanna like talk about beforehand? Actually, I have something I wanna talk about beforehand. I'm gonna go to my profile library so I can see. <clears throat> I finished enemies that I was supposed to finish from fucking whatever like last week. Ah, uh, last season. Yep. So they're down here. So. I wanted to cover real quick, good old uh, Violet Evergarden. I just had that last episode to cover. I fucking cried again. Like, every time I fucking cry to these animes, like, my eyeballs burn with the force of, like, 10,000 suns. It yeah, sucks. Man. It's because I don't cry at all, ever. So my eyes are like, your tear ducts don't exist. Burn! And I'm like, ah, uh, why? Probably have, like hey, chronic dry eye at this point. <laughs> hey man, fucking uh, uh, couple couple years from now, man, you're you're, you're gonna be, <coughs> you, you'll be fine. There'll, there'll be enough anime to make, make you cry li like a little bitch. Nah, that's never gonna happen. What's funny is like the the stuff that's supposed to be sad and make me cry doesn't. Like I bet if I watch what is the saddest anime you seen the fucking whatever planet or not. I bet if I go watch that, I won't cry. But like, for some reason, these are just so moving and great. I just like them. It's not very sad. Nah, also, man, like, the the biggest like problem is is that Violet Evergarden and fucking the Ancient Magic Bride. I have a connection to the character, the main characters of both. I am a totally unemotional, unfeeling. Like, you know, I barely believe I'm even a fucking human being. Like, so you know, that comes into play with Violet. And then also, like, I feel like I'm more like Elias, you know, than Chisei, like, because I'm not suicidal, you know, whatever. Um, but, like, yeah, like, I just don't understand people and feelings and things. So, like, that's why Violet Evergarden hits me super hardcore. Because, much like her, I am a motherfucking monster. I just haven't gone to war and slaughtered tons of countless people. <clears throat> if the, uh, if the chance presents itself, you know, like, if we end up going to World War III, the whole jokes and the memes, and we really do get drafted, uh, that's probably where that's going to happen. But, for now, no. Plus, I'd rather not join the military, because I can't follow orders. That's, like, the only thing, is that she was a tool, and then she going to follow orders, whereas, like, I make my own decisions for myself. That's why I don't join the military. That's why I haven't heard it. But, anyway. So, Violet Evergarden... <coughs> is going to go ahead and get a 10 out of 10 for last season for me because it was fucking amazing. I liked the animation. I liked the story. I liked fucking everything. And it also made me cry. So, like, same thing with uh, Ancient Magic Bride. It, it's the same thing. I liked the animation. I liked the story. And it made me cry multiple times. So it was very moving. So all in all, it was great. Um, going to go ahead and cover a little bit of Kukubu. That one was a pretty good anime. It was kind of different and weird and, like, storyline kind of didn't make sense for the most of the anime. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. <clears throat> it was not bad, and it wasn't, like, super boring to me or anything. It just kind of wasn't super great. I don't know. Hard to explain. Uh, what on Death March? Did I not fucking... Did I not put a... 
thing on Death March? Hold up. Did we not cover Death March whenever Death March ended? I thought we did. I thought we did too. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I just put down 7 out of 10. Or maybe that was an 8. Maybe I did cover Death March already. Ah, whatever. Death March is an 8 out of 10. Well, it's not. It shows up in my list as like, hey, there was nothing here. Like, I didn't put down a, like, a score for it. But, like, what? What? It? what it? <laughs> Um, I'm so pretty anyway. sure I gave it like a seven or something like that. Yeah, I gave it an eight. Um, and then on to mm, Martin Eden, Eden, Chan, whatever. The the weird German thing, the fucking magical girl anime, the super goofy and shit. Um, I just finished this up just now, and it was also really good. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a seven out of ten because it's like magical girl, but not any norm magical girl stuff. I like the whole idea of it using, like, the tall tale and the, like, fairy tale stories as, like, that's the root of the magic, the actual stories themselves. I thought it was funny how the Americans didn't have any stories. They're like, <laughs> I love how it depicts America. It, like, the quote was, you know, it's just a bunch of ads and mixed media put together to make it our own stories. Like, one of the girls is a fucking, um, what is it? She was the, the, her, her magic was zombie, so she could summon zombies. And then there was Little Match Girl, which Little Match Girl, I think, is actually a little fairy tale. And just some other things that were just kind of funny. Oh, there was a, it was like Starfleet something or another, but it was, it was literally Star Wars. Uh, Cause the chick, she had a katana, but it made lightsaber sounds, and that's all she did, that was her magic. So it was totally, totally just straight Star Wars. <laughs> did she use the Force? No. She didn't use. She literally just had a sword that fucking cut through things like a lightsaber. That's it. Oh, goddamn. That's why I was like, I was like, what did that say? It said Starfleet something or Star something. I was like, oh no. I was like, it's definitely Star Wars. And it's just like, wee, wee. so yeah, that that ends up getting seven ten. Blah, 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 seven out of ten for me. And so there we go. I covered that stuff really quickly. <clears throat> now back to the schedule. <coughs> Save. Go in the back proper definitely. Um, alrighty then. So, first thing on this list is High School DXD Hero. Ha ha! Yes. Here we have the new addition to the High School DXD series. Uh, first fucking episode right to it. Issei goes green eggs and ham. I'm assuming to finish up something that happened in the last season. And, uh, we are reunited with the Opie Dragon. <laughs> that was... Well, well you, you the talk, if, you're talk, if you're talking about episode zero, yeah, that was a recap of the very last episode from last yeah. season. That that was still the first episode, I guess. Was it just a recap? Because you said that something's yeah. changed. I, I feel like something's changed, but I, looking back at it, it's probably not. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yeah, I feel it, like it's changed it's, and stuff, but, it, yeah. It's marked as episode zero, though. I, I'm still calling it the first episode. episode. <laughs> it's still the first episode of the season. It's the first thing that was released. Alright, dude. So, yeah. That's how this works, man. We cover... We watch it as it comes out. It's the first episode that came out for the season. It's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So on, anyway, the, on, on the real first episode. Okay, so my dick. Just fucking stroke it. There, there was boobs <laughs> everywhere. <That's> great. <laughs> that it? <laughs> Is that all you gotta say? There was tits, well, and well, it was he, great. All right. Well, he fought, and he fought the uh, the one dude that uh, basically kicked his ass. <laughs> he bought. He fought, fought Rita's cousin. I think he said it was. I, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, a, yeah. the ultra strong guy that has no power except just raw strength. He's literally asked to for this universe in a nutshell. And he doesn't yell, thankfully. Mm, kind of. He does have intensity. Like he, I think, I'm pretty sure he does actually kind of yell. Like he's got the whole mm, beastly presence yell type thing. Like, he's just naturally loud. He's not, like, Asta yelling randomly. But anyway. <coughs> so, yeah. That's basically just moving along. They're also going on a trip to some... I forget where it was in Japan. Fuyuki, I think. Something like that. Not Fuyuki. Eh. 
Something with an F. They're going on a trip for school, and they're going to go visit places. Um, most of the gang goes, except for Rias, Casper, and fucking, um, I don't remember the other chick, but whatever. Yeah. And that's, that's the end of that episode. They're basically now going on a trip. They're on a ship. To Kyoto? Is it Kyoto? Oh, yeah. it's Kyoto. Uh, yeah, they're going to Kyoto. Oh, they're going to Kyoto. Whatever, fuck it. Uh, anyway, on to, speaking of Austin Yelling, on to Black Clover. Uh, as usual, Black Clover is... Hey, hey, you should, you should go to the video room and just have that play in the background while we talk about it. What did you do? Screaming through our... No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Uh, last couple episodes of Black Clover, uh, finishing up the conflict for the, uh, fucking capital. And now the most recent episode was, I, I, I feel like it was, I was gonna say filler, cause technically it's not filler, but it really is. It's just like, they're doing a mixer fucking meeting girls and shit. It, it's kind oh, of a, that was it, hilarious. it's a non-important episode. No, it's funny how the, <laughs> the fucking quiet dude's like, could I go with you? I really want to go. <laughs> I, they're just like, I don't know what he's thinking. Oh, I, I want to see him fighting with them or something at some point. That would be great. And just like actually hanging out with everybody, being a, an accepted part of the group. Yeah. Well, he he seems like he, he's really the embodiment of like real goths, almost. I think or, like a lot of people that are goth and shit, where they're, they're just shy and don't talk to people, <clears throat> and, like wear black and do all that shit, and like they're super quiet. <laughs> He's a proper mother. <coughs> but yeah, so Black Clover is kind of, well, it, it was going on something, and then like, this random episode is kind of one of those, like, it just fucked up the flow of the show for me, personally. It's like filler. It's basically what it is, but like, they already had 50-something episodes planned out, so I don't know why they would... Why would you pre-plan filler? I don't understand. <laughs> And then he actually goes to the manga and is like, oh, this isn't filler, what the fuck? <laughs> this is canon filler! Ugh! Yeah, that would I be, bet, that has to I, be the worst. I, I bet you, uh, that girl that Asta meets in the mixer, like, something happens to her or something. I don't know, maybe something. All the women he seems to like, uh, all the women, like, he meets that like him. But he's got his heart set on the sister. Yo, I wonder, like, I, I ship him and Noel though, like, they're, they're cute. She just needs to confess to him, though. It just needs to happen. Yes. <laughs> anyway. No problem. Also, we'll definitely turn her down. Like, yeah, ah! probably. I only love one woman in my life. Something like that. But anyway, uh, so enough about Black Clover and Austin Yelling. On to the Galactic Space Heroes anime. Um, the last two episodes, well, the the end of the fight, um, or the, like, really, I guess the last three, because a lot of these things we didn't really talk about, we talked about starting to watch them. So, the beginning of anime is, well, there, it's this fucking, anime is a spaceship battle anime, that's what happens in the first couple episodes. Um, fucking Blondie is up against insurmountable odds, and fucking wipes the goddamn floor with the enemy that's supposed to have three separate fleets that have about almost equal, like, ship count to theirs, and he fucking individually takes each one of them out. For some reason, <clears throat> like, it showed on the TAC map that they were super close together, but in space, actually, each, each, uh, one of the fucking fleets was, like, five or four hours in between each other, and, like, they were, their plan was to surround them. They really should have just formed one massive blob. Did they not learn anything from basic RTS school? You just blob the shit out of something if you don't if you have that many numbers. Who gives a fuck? <clears throat> but yeah, also in circle mode well, because you know you get flanks and stuff from over there. So that's what they were trying to do. It, except I, again, I don't know know why you're gonna station your fleet like four to you know six hours apart from each other, <clears throat> which is enough time for that dude to take his fleet. Ram down the, you know, one of their fleets and then just go kill the next one. That's basically what it is. Just jump down the <coughs> yeah. And then the, uh, I guess basically his counterpart, brilliant tactician on the enemy side, pops up and does his, I'm a br 
brilliant tactician thing. I'm getting a totally, like, alderman in the sky feel from this, which I really like. Because the main character wasn't a big fighter or anything, but he was a retardedly brilliant tactician. And so it's kind of cool to watch these two duke it out. Um, and that battle <coughs> basically ends in a draw with what's left. I mean, the one haired dude wiped two fleets, and they got to the third fleet being commanded by that guy, and that guy gave him a run for his money, and they just both decided to retreat. And then the most recent episode was just some of the backstory between the blonde haired dude and his red haired, uh, uh, I was gonna say slave boy, but his red haired, like, sidekick boy, which is his best friend or whatever. <clears throat> so it's, it's progressing okay. I'm pretty sure with the way this anime goes, the next episode, prediction here, is gonna be the backstory of the other guy on the other side. So basically, what it's been doing is it goes to the blonde haired dude, it goes to the black haired dude, it goes to the blonde haired dude. So I'm guessing it's going back to the blonde haired dude. Which is kind of interesting. <clears throat> it's two separate main characters and basically two separate stories interwoven into one. I'm kind of curious on the source material that is actually put this because of that. <coughs> what is the source material? Um, this Wikipedia franchise. Huh. Wow, what the... Oh, that was the original. <clears throat> well, there was an original fucking in 88. And some of those actors said I don't know if the original was supposed to be better. Wow. The character looks the fucking same. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <coughs> like, it's almost how he looks now. Holy shit. How many episodes is this? Holy shit, it goes to 110 episodes? Uh... Wow, looks like we might be in for a... Massive fucking series here. Interesting. Back to this. Does this mean you have to go back and watch that? No. It, it's it's literally a reboot of that series. I was like. oh. But anyway, so enough about that. It's got spaceships and shit, and I love it. I do. I'm to Tokyo Gold. <laughs> so, as I'm currently done with watching it, since I keep catching up, um, <clears throat> so it starts off kind of where the second season ends. I mean, we, you don't really know what happens to the end of the second season. At first, I was having problems, because the first episode wasn't, like, telling me enough information. I thought that Kaneki died, and they put his body parts into this kid. But, uh, no. Uh, whatever the fuck happened at the end of season two, whenever that one dude fought him, I guess fucking torched his brain, because now he's got, uh, like, multiple personality disorder, basically. He's fucking memories and everything, like, they're gone-ish. <clears throat> His fucking personality and everything split and fragmented. Then again, he was fucking, like, used and abused, like, in the middle of the second season by, what's his name, the super evil wicked guy that uh, stole him in the first season or whatever. <coughs> and, like, that fucking fucked him up. So, his his mental stability is non-existent. But you already, already knew that. Uh, anyway, so it follows this new story. Follows the uh, character Heisei or Sasuke or something like that. Um, and it's it's basically fucking Kaneki, <clears throat> but he doesn't know he's Kaneki. He only knows he's this kid now, and he's now a fucking inspector and has his own team of inspectors that are also half ghoul called the Quinks uh, Squad. Wait, the main character is Kaneki, but he doesn't know that he's Kaneki. <coughs> yeah, explain this to you the other day. <laughs> well then. He's Kaneki, he doesn't know he's Kaneki, and like, during the second episode, he saw one of his old friends, and his brain was like, hurt, 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 he's fucking, and he like, went green eggs in hand. And then he also met up with the, uh, fuck, I don't even remember the goddamn cafe anymore, the one with uh, his wife who... My fool Amelia! No, his, uh, his wife who basically made. The one chick that I think he liked, the chick that really liked him. Uh, fuck, I forget her name. The one also bad at the first one. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he went to their shop. And that didn't go anywhere. That was like the end of the second episode. And the third episode begins and like, they're doing something else now. They're going after. Uh, going after the chick that, uh, called fucking the Nutcracker, the BDSM chick that likes to fucking kill dudes' testicles. 
but also is getting people to be sold off of the auction thing, kind of like Kaneki was sold off to in the first anime, uh, to the weird fucking ultra creepy guy that would sniff his blood and fucking go green eggs in hand. That was some weird shit. <coughs> um, yeah, so that just, they're gonna go crash that party now. There's a fucking inspector ring about to go down on it. And that's basically what's about to ensue, I'm assuming he's about to be in battle. Apparently there's like three different squads from Algiri Tree there. So, yeah, it's a, like, we're gonna get our first fucking solid fight set up. Which is cool. But also not. Because, like, there's some things with this anime series that are bothering me. They're not touching upon the fact that, like, the the half ghouls can't eat normal people food. Like, they're eating food, no reactions, or drinking stuff. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know if the inspector doctors found a way to, like, make it more livable without eating fucking people or not. Because it's just kind of weird. It doesn't make sense, like, canon with the first, you know, the first entire few episodes of the first series, where he can't eat, and where, T- oh, there we go, figure her name out, Toka, where Toka is eating her friend's food and poisoning herself and, like, hurting herself because of it. So now that's there. It's kind of, like, bothers me because that was so ingrained in the first couple of series is that, hey, they have to eat people. They don't have a choice. <coughs> So yeah, I don't know. I'm not not really sure what's with this. It's okay though. It's just I'm not doing it at the same time. I mean, of course, I'm gonna watch it. Mm, and then on to you're watching Tachi Bon on the Triangle, right? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Take it away. Well, girl goes to uh, live at this apartment that's full of a bunch of girls. Uh, it's a, Suze. Yep, a lot of it. It's a three-minute series. There's, there really isn't any real story to talk about other than, uh... Oh, they're three-minute shorts? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <really>? Just know <coughs> that there, it's it's funny as fuck. And... Lots of boobs. It's great. <laughs> I love how you like shy, shyly says that. Someone doesn't want the world to know that he loves titties. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, give me the bountiful, bouncing titties. I am an opie dragon, basically. Hell oh, yes, dude. I am Issei, hundred percent. If I had a way to power myself up, it would be tits, hundred percent. Anyway, carrying on to 3D Kanjo Real Girl. Now this series. It's based off a uh, nerdy kid going to high school, like, being, basically being fucking downright mistreated by everybody, as being gross and everything. What's funny is, I can relate. I look very similar to him, except I don't have blue eyes and blue hair, because, well, that's unrealistic. But, you know, brown hair, brown eyes, literally the same way I wear my hair and my same glasses. So, <clears throat> main character basically gets no attention from nobody, everybody calls him gross all the time, everybody's just fucking with him and shit talking him. He only has one friend, which is a super weeb dude that's weaving so hard he decided he's going to start wearing his they say cat ears, but I think they're elf ears. I don't that doesn't look like cat ears. <clears throat> I I was getting confused by that too. Okay, so yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're a little more. they're a little too pointy. They're not no no, they're not pointy, they're fucking like they're circular, kind of. Yeah. Uh, a weird. And they're like, I don't even, I wouldn't even say elf ears, but something else, like fucking Jack and something like that. <clears throat> anyway. So, yeah. Obviously, that's his best friend, and like, they're fucking weird. Uh, obviously. So, anyway. <clears throat> um, but it starts off with him being late to school because of he was watching fucking Natural Girl and oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and uh, meets this chick, which looks like the kind of girl that he wouldn't normally socialize with. And, well, he doesn't socialize with him, but it looks like the girl that he particularly hates. Like a girl that's badly mannered, you know, fucking just kind of uh, slutty and all these other things. <clears throat> and as they're fucking doing school 
things together as they're doing detention, basically, or whatever, cleaning the pool. They fall in together, and they basically start kind of falling for each other. Uh, second episode, he defends her against a dude. <clears throat> Even though she's supposedly sleeping around with people. And that's what it definitely looks like. I don't know if she's actually sleeping around them, but like, you know, she definitely kissed another dude randomly. Um, <clears throat> he that's tried funny. to fight for her. He kind of got his ass beat. Um, but he stood up for her anyway because he's starting to fall for her. And, and that whole episode's basically him falling for her. Her, they like, asked him out and then she didn't, he denied her. Because of what everybody else is saying, also because of stuff. Uh, he, he just watched fucking her kiss uh, a dude and, like, <laughs> fight with the dude because she was, like, you know, with other dudes and shit. Anyway, oh, by the end of the episode... a little slut. Pretty much. By the end of the episode, they end up actually together, and now they're dead. Now the third episode goes with trials and tribulations of the nerdy dude trying to understand his feelings and trying to, like, express himself and just being awful at it. Which is, like... I would say a normal high school thing, or a normal, like, first-time dating thing. I, I will Especially say when the, you're weirdo. The, the thing that sucks about this is that, uh, you know that she's leaving in, uh, what was it, half a month half, anime half, time? I don't know, I mean, half, a half, half a year. Half a year anime time. <coughs> yeah, but, literally she was she's ready to yeah. that team. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Well, like, that's the funny thing, is, like, I thought about it. And I've seen all these other animes where, like, fucking, they live in Japan, but, like, they live in, one lives in Tokyo, one lives like, in Osaka, they live really far apart, but they still make it work. Because, realistically, Japan isn't that big. <clears throat> Especially with, like, the rail system in Japan, you can get around pretty quick to, like, anywhere. <clears throat> as far as I yeah, know. Yeah, the transportation over there is, uh, fantastic. <clears throat> they have, ra- like, proper mass transit. It's almost like people in America wouldn't know what that is. Hmm. Actually, I'm, I'm saying that, but apparently Dallas's transit system is decent. We have a, there's a light rail in Dallas that runs from up north where I'm at all the way into, like, central Dallas, and you can get, apparently, from a lot of places. So it's, it's kind of like how I, it would be if I was in Japan and if I wanted to ride that mass transit rail their life. I'd be, like, riding around in trains in Japan. It's kind of cool. Mm. And, you know, surprised. Austin's mass transit was okay, but, like, the, the bus system was pretty AIDS. It takes you, like, fucking 30 minutes or fucking an hour and some change to get anywhere. Like, two I think, hours. I think my bus system is pretty decent. I never actually used it, but I've seen the routes and shit. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things. <clears throat> But yeah, and then like in the last episode, they end up making another friend and like trying to save her from her thing, where the guys were talking about just using her for money and fucking because she's easy and she's dumb and won't do anything and all that stuff. It's just terrible. <coughs> so they they meet so basically. People. Yep, basically he meets a nice girl. I I feel like by the end of the series he's gonna like grow a group of friends or a harem or both and like. You know, because people are gonna realize he's not a terrible person. And, and on a, I'm gonna go on a side note here. I, I'm getting a lot of vibes from like my real life high school experience, where like I used to be basically very much like him. <clears throat> I was an outcast loner. I just kind of sat and kept to myself and didn't talk to anybody. Um, and everybody thought I was super fucking weird. Thought I was, you know, gross, super weird, thought, you know, whatever, all this sort of thing. Basically thought everything bad and nobody would ever talk to me. And, and I never really engaged and talked to me about it, so I still don't do it today. I mean, I'm very bad at engaging <coughs> conversation. Um, but he, you know, I guess starting to realize that some of these people that he thought were bad or really, you know, not everybody's bad or whatever, or, you know, judging people by the way they look or the way they act in the first place, you know, it's not who they are kind of deal. And, and I had my own run-in with that. They're, like I told the story, <coughs> that I'm sure high kick and other people sort of, there was a really hot girl that I thought was one of the preppy people, which, like, for people like me, preppy people were just the complete polar opposite of, that's a no-go zone. But she turned out to be really cool uh, in my senior year. And I felt kind of bad, because, like, the whole time I could have been decent friends with this chick. And she's very cute, too. 
Um, but I'd never approached her because I thought she was, you know, just completely different from her. And in some aspects she was, but like she liked video game stuff. <clears throat> and like she thought about preppy people the same way I did, even though she hung out with a lot of them. So it was one of those things. Meh. But anyway, on to Alice or Alice. Now this is a cutesy little shorts, like three minute long shorts or whatever, or whatever the fuck. It's super cute, you know, funny, and so far it kind of has like no relevance to anything. I think it actually is a story though, because like so far it's been an actual storyline. <coughs> so, I don't know. It's about, supposedly the synopsis is about two girls and their fucking brother with a cis complex, even though I don't really see that. Like, I, I feel like they have the brother complex. It, I feel like it's the other way around, yeah, the synopsis is supposed to be wrong. But like, yeah, it's about two sisters and the brother, and then like, there's the two cat girls, which also love the brother. Everybody loves the brother. But, uh, no, it's no like, it's not like Aramanga Sensei or fucking you know, Little Sisters that I need and all this stuff. The, the, the brother's just a really nice dude. Yeah, he's just a normal dude. And so it's just about, about a bunch of cute little Lolis basically doing cute little things, harder stuff. And then Loli fucking cat girls too, and whatever. I, I'm assuming it's just supposed to be a cute, short, weird thing. And it's actually okay. And this is from somebody who hates that kind of shit. It's, it's cute enough. <coughs> Ah, and then onto Steins Gate Zero. Yes. From, like, the beginning. Fucking... So, Steins Gate Zero backstory is it's the beta world line. It's the 23B ending, or whatever the fuck. Those people are calling it in the comments. It's episode 23, what happens at the end whenever he fucking basically kills, um, Makisei. And... This is two years later, I think, after that whole incident. <laughs> so, he kills Makase Kurisu and saves Mayuri that way. But now, he's in fucking, like, t immense turmoil. Because, in the original one, the whole point of the original one, is he goes back again afterwards to make sure he's able to save everybody. Um, which is his point. He wants nobody to be dead. So he goes back in time to redo is again. Um, but in this timeline, that's not what happens. And she's been dead for two years. He's fucking not doing well. Like, he no longer goes to the laboratory. He's no longer doing the whole deranged fucking like, scientist thing anymore. He's, like, he only wears his dark clothing you now. He's fucking gone. Like, he's not feeling good after that. <coughs> Keeps having flashbacks and all that shit. Uh, otherwise known from, to normal humans is PTSD. Um, so he's seeing a therapist and all sorts of stuff, it's basically trying to find it's not real or whatever. And within the first episode, fucking, he sees, or there's a seminar at the college that he goes to and I guess is also working at, um, and a girl from the school that Curious who is from comes up, um, and is talking about a thesis. Well, the, or the, the researcher, or their AI, whatever the fuck they're doing, and it was all based off of research and an idea that Kurisu had, and they talked about it. Because <clears throat> basically he's, I think he's been trying to say that she never existed kind of deal now, trying to pretend that she never existed, because nobody else knows her, obviously, so she never came to the laboratory since she did. But, um, he's been trying to cope <clears throat> with that, and now it's just like, nope, she was real. <laughs> Good job. Um, and then we'll see more in the next episode. But it's, it's mind fucky, super thrillery and gritty, it's fucking science gates that we all know and love, but it's gonna be the new story. So, yeah. <coughs> oh, also the beginning shows you that they, the world that they, the whole mind they live in, um, it's continuing to be used, is that it's literal hell. It is the worst world line, apparently. <coughs> Killing her apparently caused bad shit. I I'm gonna go probably with, since it has to do with AI, I'm gonna have to go with, uh, Terminators. <laughs> basically. Uh, that's what it's probably gonna be going down to. So, yeah. We'll see what happens there. Um. 
Is there anything else you've watched coming this way? Uh, I mean, I know we watched like Megalo Box, but you've watched anything else before it? Uh, I've watched Dadakun Wakoi Wo Shnai. Uh, first one, okay, go for it. Um, Foreign Girl Comes to Japan. Foreign Girl Comes to Japan? <laughs> That's what I heard too! Uh, tell Wayne I heard that too. <laughs> Uh, she, she, I think she's probably like from England or some shit, but, uh, she has a random encounter with this dude in Japan, that's the main character, and he is a photographer, and, uh... And then I start making something about it. Basically. Uh, basically. Now, the, the, is literally? The, is that like, literally what happens? No. Oh, okay. It'd be hilarious if it did, but uh, now they they <laughs> that only uh, if we're on a hentai side. <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty damn funny, but um, basically what's happening is uh, it, he convinced her to become a photographer because well he didn't he didn't really convince her he she was just like hey the only person I know is in this club I'm gonna join this, this club fuck everything else. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So on to I think both of our like story. ultra favorites this season. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Megalo Box. Oh God, my dick's so hard for that anime. It's it's the only thing that we really wanted <coughs> to talk about today, to be honest. No, I mean I like to talk about all sorts of other things realistically, but, <laughs> but Megalo Box. Fucking got. Mm, it, it's gonna. It's it's pretty much already got a ten out of ten for me. It is beautiful. Like it, it's it's movie quality for sure. It it really is. <clears throat> like that's gonna be one that I need to mark immediately as. Hey, I need to pick this up when this is over. It's pretty. Good. It's got a good story. It's got beautiful animation. And on on top of that, beautiful fight scenes. It's like Fate, basically, but just boxing. And, and nice soundtracks. Don't forget that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's music critical too. <coughs> it actually honestly gives me a solid 90s, like, late 90s, early 2000s anime feel. That's probably why I like it so much. Get that? You get that feeling too? I would say so, yeah. I think that's what it is. I honestly think that's why we like it so much. Because it's like, oh, it's good. It's back when anime was good. <laughs> I mean, the, uh, shit. Didn't they say that they're doing this for like a 20th anniversary or some <coughs> shit like that? I think it's like a 50th. I don't know, it's something. It might have been 50th. 50th sounds more reasonable. Uh, an original story based on the season a Shiti no Joe mocking a. Let's see. Just to fucking check this real quick. Welcome to the uh, stream, little helper. Yes, welcome, little helper. The original was back in '68. So yeah, Damn. Or, or something. Er, no, thirty, thirty, thirty. Good shit. Cool. There you go. There's oh, history behind it. Is... <laughs> yep. I'm like, I'm like looking through the fucking stream, and it's like that looks. Old school AF. That's cool. It's great. So, you know, that basically it's, uh, so far it's about main character, JD or Jump Dog. Fucking boxing. Uh, he's currently starts off doing fixed fights, even though he wants to fight for realsies, because he can easily shit on most of those fools. Uh, meets the, the creator of the Megalo Boxing Tournaments, fucking, her, basically her pet. I mean, he even acts like he calls her owner and everything. Um, and he wants to fight for realsies. Well, thank you the episode rolls around. Uh, dude bro rolls up to their fixed fighting ring and he fucking uh, starts fighting them. <clears throat> He's, you know, super cocky, tries to use only one hand, is kind of beating the shit out of the main character. Kind of. I say kind of because the main character eventually launches a strike that causes the man to use his second arm and or else he would have probably been knocked the fuck out 
and even like the dude's face says the same thing, and that's exactly what he says too. It's like if you didn't use your other arm, you probably would have been down already. <laughs> so anyway, he gets beat down. He goes down for the count. <clears throat> gets back up still, even though like he made the uh, big bad. Basically says nobody's ever gotten up from that. So then he's like. Come see me in my ring. And then that's the, the journey. I'm assuming that we're going to start watching is the journey of this man fighting to get into the Megalobox tournament and then fighting Yuri. I mean, he got his uh, ID and everything. But he, got, he got a fake ID because he didn't. The reason why he didn't join in the first place is because he was not a real citizen. Even though I th I'm pretty sure he was. Like, all the little childhood shots or whatever, when he was a kid, just shows him inside the city. Yeah. I mean, he probably he just lost his ID. Or something like that. Uh, yeah. Well, he, he didn't even have to reapply. He probably just needed to get new ID. I don't know how the future ID system works, but I like Social Security and stuff. You lose that shit, you just get another one. Basically, yeah. So, <clears throat> anyway. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's basically where we're at. Yeah. Be short, simple, sweet. Uh, and there's not way too much to talk about for the series yet because it's just starting out. Yep. Other than like just how fantastic it is. Yep. I can get a kitty cat came down. She came out of the fucking suitcase bag. It's, it. it's not like the fucking talks where we're dissecting the game mechanics of uh the anime last season. I think what was it, Death March? Mm -hmm. We we went on like fucking uh, ten twenty minutes just talking about the game mechanics and how the like what he's able to do like the limitations of it and shit. Yeah, which was one of the cool things about that. Anyway. Um, and now on to Serato Sunipo uh, Sun Sunipo Ryu to Anyway, the fucking magical swords anime with dragons. Um. This anime is interesting. It starts off following two wizards, also known as Jus Jushiki, I think, in this series or whatever. Or, uh, offensive Jus Jushiki is what so like they call them. I'm assuming that they use offensive spells. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, these two dudes, within the first episode, defeat uh, what they think is a black dragon, which is supposed to be super hardcore, and you know, the club. They defeated a, like, fake or free ogre or something like that, which is still a big deal. Um, three eyed, you know, ultra old dragon. And, uh, from there you find out that they have an agency where they defeat things. It's two dudes working together. Uh, you find out a little bit about their quirks. Red haired dude's got a waifu. Some elf woman with big old titties. The police girl with the big titties. Um, and really, this is not too much going on. Um, and then the last episode, they uh, have a job now working for the cardinal of one of the factions, as there are two factions that I guess didn't have it in existence in this place. One is a church like, um, a church like monarchy kind of faction, and the other one is like the dragon people faction. It says there's dragons in this. There's also a dragon human hybrid things, I think, or dragon, which I think is like the descendant of a dragon or something like that. Maybe it's something of that nature. And anyway, uh, those two factions are fighting, um, because the dragons, I think, are allied, you know, basically, for the dragons, the dragons have their region, the humans have their region, and then there's like a DMZ, the North Iron Zone, or a neutral zone between the two. Dragons aren't supposed to go into it and go into the human land or sort of be killed, stuff like that. Um, and then there's a girl running around that's, I'm assuming, is the wife of the dragon, the elder dragon guy, the elder dragon that we killed. And she's trying to kill both of these dudes. Um, probably because they killed the, the, the old dragon. I mean, it doesn't explain the chicks just using names, but I think through context of this, I'm pretty sure it's just the, the dragon was also, you know, it was her husband. Because she's like inhuman for a while, her speech is kind of fucked up. Just so weird. 
I also should be able to use weird magic. Um, but yeah, and that's basically where it leaves off is the offer of last act. You know, that's it. Uh, hard to explain. Okay, from there, I'm going to go with Hino Matsuri. Now this is another anime that's... It, it's kind of cute. Uh, so it starts off with some weird fucking old, like, some weird, what, what's the word here? Gintama little fight scene. And the chick's beating up a bunch of dudes. But anyway, then it, I guess, goes back in time, question mark? Somehow? Yeah. Yeah. It like goes back a couple years like, or whatever. Th- this, is, this is how it started, kind of deal. Yeah. Um, and so, sh- Anyway, long story short, um, they're, well, it's not really explained too much of what they are. They're little girls I, sent I from another, it, to be honest. Little girls sent from uh, another dimension? Planet? Planet? Question mark? Question mark? Uh, question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Yeah, they're basically aliens. I don't know. A- anyway, but they speak perfect Japanese, though. Yeah. <laughs> and they and they also know what, like, Japanese stuff is. <laughs> So I don't know. It is kind of weird. So anyway, whatever. They come from a magical portal out of nowhere in these weird little drop pod things. And... Uh, what? In this man's apartment. Yeah, one finds... It's hilarious. The first one, Hina, finds herself inside of a Yakuza fucking member's apartment, basically. Where he has all these fancy faces and shit. Anyway, fast forward, she breaks shit, whatever, they have their own little hijinks, and he figures out that she has, well, he immediately figures out she has powers, but he, like, goes to put her powers to good use. As a, so as a Yakuza, he's actually a decent human being, which is weird, I think, honestly. Like, he doesn't want to make her kill anybody, even though he knows that she fucking can go Green Egg's hand. And, like, he tries to make her use her power, you know, as least destructive as possible. And all this other stuff. He, like, fucking shot out tons of money for a body, tons of clothing, furniture, all that stuff. Etc. I think it was, school. like, one million yen or some shit like that. Ten. I think it was ten. It was a ten lot. Million yen. Yeah. <coughs> I think the total was, like, ten or something, because they, it came back up. They're like, I heard that he bought his daughter, like, ten or twenty million yen in clothing and stuff. And it's like, ooh, ouch. I mean, that's... I thought it thousand dollars was shit. <laughs> a lot of fucking money. Yeah, dude. Fucking all the clothing and shit. Yeah. What's funny is just, oh, God, he's a Yakuza dude and they're just like living the high life or whatever. So, but anyway, he's not using her as a tool. Kind of like the whole Violet Evergarden thing where the major didn't really use her as a tool. Really he tried not to. Um, they come to agreements, whatever. And they're just kind of running around living life. Um, she, or I think originally wanted to go back to where she was from. But I think now she decided no, that she... she yeah, well, originally. She originally like, she did. She, and, like... She pretty much just ran away from that planet. Well, or they... I, guess she I mean, they that's... Wanted to. That's why they sent that one girl to go kill her. Yeah. I don't I don't know if she ran away or if they somebody, like, excommunicated her kind of deal. One of the two. <laughs> the, the point is but no. no longer well, of that planet. Well, no, I think she had said she wanted to go back, but then she was like, I want to stay here with you because you're not going to fucking make me do all this shit. You know, and I mean, instead do all this she, just, she just does it of her free will. It's like, oh, hey, bad person? Okay. I, I, I go, t- and go and take care of all of them. Yeah. And then second episode, a girl was sent, another girl with psychic powers as well, was sent to kill her. Uh, They end up basically... Having some <laughs> retarded battle, which is kind of funny. Um, and Hina won, whatever. Hina was like, basically, she's changed. I think she used to be fucking probably super like and murderous and stuff. And that she's hanging out with that dude, she changed. And they became really, basically, ultra friendly friends and had a good time, whatever, however. And, yeah, then they worked out a deal where they were just gonna say that she had been killed. Um, yeah. And then the then the, the girl couldn't get back to her own whatever. I'm just gonna call it her own X <laughs> location X because <laughs> I don't know if it's plant. I don't know if it's the universe. I don't even know if it's like a facility on the planet. You know, on planet. I have no idea until it's no, explained. I, 
I still think it's hilarious that uh, Hina pretty much snapped her neck. Yeah, that too. She's just like, I was using my strongest. No, oh, I was holding back a little bit. Just fucking broke her neck. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, like, the next half of the episode, they're just like, you know, has a friend from school. Uh, the dude bro is trying to get all the women back, but the women think uh, that he has a kid now and he's treating his kid right. And so the women are like, all the bluesies he's with no normally are just kind of not being there. Like, ends up yeah. ends up taking Hina to a titty bar. Uh, right. not only that, but uh, the fucking the little girl <laughs> became a bartender. The, the Hina's friend became the bartender. <laughs> Because they, they were looking for her father, or going to her father, which is what he used to do. And like, they went to the bar that he always goes to. Nobody was there. Drunk dude walked in. Drunk dude started telling her how to make orders. And the girl just kind of became a bartender accidentally because she was too often scared to know what to do. <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be canon now. It's like what she's going to do now. And she's like, they're all in elementary or something, I think. Something no, like that, yeah. Actually, are they in elementary? They might be in middle school or something. Keena's just smaller and looks like a little kid, but like that, that other chick looks kind of middle aged or whatever. Middle aged or like middle teenage or something. I mean, so, if yeah. anything, it'd be like early middle school or like late elementary. Yeah, something like that. E either way. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, as he says, they all get drunk and then they decide, uh, Hina says that she wants to go to a girly bar. And then at first he's like, no. And then the drunk dude next to him says, we should do it. And then he looks and he's like, yeah, let's go to a girl. <laughs> and then they go prance through the street. To a girl. <laughs> Fucking all of them too. It's hilarious. It is hilarious. It's, it's pretty funny. It's kind of good. I like it. Uh, uh, skipping Toji no Miko, Miko, because that's the only thing I didn't catch up on, sadly. But I will uh -huh. get more back on that eventually. Okay. Yeah, I like I watched too much. Uh, <laughs> then, then on to Full Metal Panic: Invisible Victory. This is the fucking beginning of the Full Metal Panic series. I don't even remember what the fuck happened in that series. I believe they were gonna Smith was gonna start or was fighting fucking whatever the agency that their brothers in. Uh, it starts off they're basically going to fight. Um, Mithril, which is or Testarossa, and the main characters have been in fucking, you know, follow them in their weird, um, alpha driver, whatever the fuck it's called, and all that shit. They, you know, they, they're there. Um, and then the enemy organization, which I forget what it's called, the life of this is this about. The enemy organization is like, oh yeah, so, uh, those people fucked up, and you guys have been fucking destroying us, we're gonna take it seriously now. And then they launch an allied attack on Mithril and basically have fucking, so far, as far as I can tell, they kind of wiped most of their organization <laughs> And they said they were going to take it serious. They fucking did calculated strikes on their headquarters across the world and fucking basically been fucking them up. Um, and then now the main characters are being engaged at the end of the first episode. They're surrounded. I'm assuming they're going to have, you know, the anime plot on there as well as the season. And all of that. You know, where you get the, uh, the robot, do robot things. It's, it's Full Metal Panic being serious. Because Full Metal Panic's half serious, half comedy, half romance, whatever. But yeah, no, it's, it's just like fucking this series is just <laughs> instantaneously into the series. Uh, let's see. Then on to Grand Quest. Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Good old Grand Quest War. Well, we have a lot of war. War with the Coder, basically. Uh, oh boy. Kingdom of Alturk died. Um, from that battle now, the, uh, Theo is now going to basically restart everything over in his homeland. And now all of his friends are back together. He except for, I think, Lost and Massive and all of them. They're doing the other thing, holding off the uh, alliance. Um, for the union or whatever. And anyway, so he's back in his homeland, uh, fighting the Rossinis, which was his original goal that he told Silica, like, in that first, I guess, arc, or whatever the fuck I want to call it, in the beginning. 
Um, Snow is there to take over the land, and I guess from there he's going to do what he did with, in the beginning of the Grand Crest. Uh, and he's going to take everything over and just kind of sh- shit stomp people's souls in the from there. And he kind of carve himself into their nation again. That's what I'm predicting, at least. And now the question is if, uh, whether or not it'll be taken away from him again. Ah, uh, the summer will be taken away from him. He only let it go away last time so that he could, like, keep his lover. I think it's cool that they finally, like, you know, basically let that out. We're like, yeah, so I love you. Because, <laughs> I mean, it was just like, yeah, I did it for this chick. And everyone's like, oh my god, he did it for this chick. And he's like, yeah, I did it for this chick. And then they're just like, oh, so yeah, no, I totally love you. And uh, she loves me. So, so that was good. <clears throat> but basically, he's just going around this town getting denied. Um, the most recent episode, given you know, that most of uh, pretty much all of the villages are too afraid to go against the Brasinis, since they ruled basically super dictator like in the Iron Fist. Anything that was anything done wrong, they were persecuted and like instantly killed for basically any excuse. I'm sure that people were just killed for any excuse and they were on top of that. So basically, the people lived in fear and didn't be able to argue it. He got to his hometown, uh, his home his old friend or whatever, the one that saw him off, and I'm guessing the chick that loved him or whatever, some some, some sort of woman to him. Uh basically bait him into a trap. He knew it was coming. Uh townspeople ended up coming to his aid. They ended up killing that Rossini general. Mm. And then I think they uh then yeah, then he went on to do another fight. And kill another general with other people that he had gathered up to that point. And ended up bringing down that entire regime, and now I guess they the only stuff in the area. With the other Rossini general dude under his So yeah, literally it's just the, the beginning. It's like the, the beginning of the series where he kind of fucking goes in, shits on people, and then systematically starts taking over everything. What I'm waiting for, though, in this anime is, is this fight with the sand guy. The, the fucking really evil who just murdered everybody. <laughs> That's going to be really good. <clears throat> That'd be a very fun time, yes. Yeah. Wasn't the, the sand dude was actually on their side before? He I was. Wonder, I wonder what it made him decide to not <laughs> be with them anymore. Because of his whole ideology about, like, for military force. Like, be, that was the only thing. Like, you, you've been watching it, haven't you? Yeah, I have been. Yeah. He said the only reason he allied with the Alliance chick was not only because she offered her body to him, giggity, but also because she was going to rule through fucking blood and iron kind of deal, <clears throat> which means by just fighting and taking everything by force. And that's the way he likes living. That's what he think, thought. Because that was the reason, whole reason why he didn't like Theo, because Theo was like a nice dude and didn't want to do that. And then like he kind of liked the Alt-Turk guy, but the Alt-Turk guy was the same way. He didn't really want to rule that way, or didn't want to continue fighting. That's why he ended up turning against him, it's because of that. He called Honest- him soft or whatever. Honestly, Theo is basically what that, uh, that girl with the blonde hair used to be before all this shit happened. Something like that. If you- Think about it. I guess. Nah, it feels more like the, uh, the blonde haired dude. That he's trying to get them together. Because blonde haired dude's pretty chill, the, the dude who wanted her originally kind of like super pussy. Yeah. But he's not a super pussy. But that dude is a super pussy. For real. Anyway, on to Beatless. Uh, Beatless continues to be the robot waifu anime that I have come to love. You have, um, the finishing up of the whole. The, um, whatever, the whole, uh, part where they're out visiting their father, and, uh, the city is basically being attacked by, I guess, no rockets, um, which is what to do. But where all of the, the fucking, and, like, robots in the, what is it, experiment area start turning into zombies and shit, which is fun. Um, but anyway, the uh, main character tells Lacia that he loves her, uh, to stop fucking Mr. Google Atari from fucking 
taking her or becoming the second owner. Um, and, I mean, he's doing this while he's trying to save his sister. For some reason, there's men that have his sister at gunpoint following this dude around, and it's like, you know, um, and they're talking about fighting, snow about fighting everybody, and then it just kind of time skips to, oh, Gingo Matari is dead, uh, that though doesn't exist anywhere, Snowdrop is gone, everybody's gone, and he's getting questioned by the police. Now they're kind of worried about him, the police are, trying to figure out, like, how he's involved in all these other things. <clears throat> and it's interesting. Everybody keeps, everybody around him keeps trying to tell him that the robot is using him because he's a little bitch, and that doesn't make any of his own decisions. Which is quite possible. I don't think so. I think, like, the robot wife and his relationship is probably legit. <laughs> It'll be great. I mean, what more can a we like, wife and lover have, you know? Just, hey. Uh, anyway, at the end of the most recent episode, they all get invited to the, I guess she's black, I don't know, the little brown girl that has the maid fetish's place. And all of the AIs, or the red boxes, or the, the robot women are present. And they're basically discussing the future and talking about fighting or something like that. I don't know. For some reason, the, 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 the Brian girl's talking about blowing everybody up, fucking bombs. This is an entire facility. It's bombs. It's like, bitch, you crazy. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what the whole point is, other than the fact that she's... I guess found information from the game of Atari where he's asking questions because the guy was fucking crazy. He's talking about the future AIs and shit. And he's saying he wanted to see the future. See what the AIs decided and what they wanted to do. And who they wanted to kill. Just shit like that. And it's just like, whoa. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's about it. Feed list. Ah, on to Maho Shoujo site. Fucking this anime. Fucking group. First couple episodes. Ma Jesus magical Christ. girl anime from hell. <laughs> fucking magical girl anime. You only get magical powers if you fucking want to kill yourself kind of shit. Like, these, these girls are all deeply, like, depressed and suicidal and all sorts of other things. Basically, magical, the magical girl side, as it's called, only grants magical powers to girls that have very, like, just terrible backstories. Girls that are having very difficult lives and stuff like that. I mean, like, the main character of the first episode, I've, I've never had an anime piss me off so much, like, not even for the plot of how it's bad, like, it pissed me off because as I was watching what was happening to the poor girl, like, that shit exists in real life. Somebody is getting treated that way by people just like that. And that's why it pissed me off, because I fucking hate human beings. <laughs> um, but anyway. So yeah, main characters are fucking everybody's punching bag. Like, brother's punching bag. Fucking, just, all the people at school. I mean, it got to the point where, like, these girls, not only were they drowning her and kicking her and just fucking her up, they killed her fucking cat that she had found that she was taking care of. It was, like, her only source of enjoyment. Um, like, she has no way to, like, even live at home because her brother, you know, chokes her out and beats her ass and shit like that and abuses her at home. Cat, stop it! Get down! Get down! There you go. Um, and, like, yeah, and then these, these terrible human beings, like, kill the cat because she loves it, only to fuck with her, and then, like, they pull in a dude to fucking rape her? And and then whenever they die and they think the girl killed her, they get fucking even more mad at the girl. And it's like, bitch, you were trying to get this girl raped. What is wrong with you people? Of course they deserve to die. I'm over here like, they fucking just kill them all. So and you, the you're pretty, you, you're probably mad that the uh, the one's still alive, aren't you? Eh, not really. But you know. Like, now the girl, after she fucking pulled the trigger on her magical gun and killed the uh, two people that were after the person that were trying to make them, like, do all those other things, uh, now she's super sad and feels terrible, and then now, like, she has the power to basically kill people if she chooses to. Um, like, she feels terrible, 
and she doesn't ever want to kill anybody again. <laughs> and I'm like, no! And the the character, the second character, the blonde-haired chick with the stop time, it, I feel like is much more reasonable. She's like, yeah, just get rid of this trash. Now, some of the things she was saying, you know, people being annoying for X reasons, and some of those reasons are weird, like, they talk to you about all this other shit. I was like, well, telling people for that reason is not okay. Like, again, these people were beating you up every day. They were making your life a living hell. You all tried to fucking jump into the train, like, multiple times now. They all, like, again, the man tried to rape you! <laughs> Come on! Just, uh, kill them all, get it over with, and then, uh, yeah, go from there. Pretty much happy. So, yeah. And then they find out there's a magical girl that's killing all the other, okay, the other magical girls, and they find her beat her. Um, it's not really all that. Nothing really happens there. I'm sure it's going to go into I mean, it's gonna go it's, the next episode. It's kind of weird how she dies in the end, though. <clears throat> oh, yeah, where she just fucking dies randomly. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I'm fuck? going to assume it has something to do with all of the power she was using. However, on the other hand, I'm kind of curious. Is like, if, since she had so many devices... If, like, each one had its own, like, life power magic reserve thing, or if it I all just ran it. off. And see, that's probably why she died then, because she was using too much, too many magic, uh, magical things. Well, I mean, the, like, the, her approach to this, uh, apocalyptic kind of deal it was, it was just weird, because, like, if, with the, the kind of system that's in place, you would think that what you would want to go and do is just recruit a bunch of people. Not to kill them, but to have them help you. Yeah, but that no. that that too. That whole fucking oh, they just kill everybody so we can prepare for the apocalypse. Excuse me. What? Yeah, to use all their magical tools. Or so. Well, you just drained a fuck ton of life going through and killing them all, and now you're going to drain even more life trying to fend off the apocalypse. Oh wait, uh, she was only trying to save herself. Enough. Basically, I think it's like going to turn down to the main character is going to be the one to save the world because, well, everybody else got these things and now they're trying to fill their selfish desires. She still didn't have any. She's just going to kind of kill all of them. She's just going to like make them bend together and uh, get rid of the threat, basically. Okay. But anyway, it's interesting. I think it, I feel like it's pretty interesting. Alrighty. <coughs> Are you still on fucking Sysan? Uh, which, by the way, Sign On, this thing uh, is now on Netflix. Oh, that's amazing. No, yep. I don't want to watch Naruto. Ah, I don't watch Naruto. Speaking of Naruto, Boku no Hero Academia, third season. This uh, is yeah, going. Yeah, I, I am still watching Sysan. Okay. Oh, where are you going to talk about? Great. Well, you find you find out that he's been repeating the uh, his last year. Uh, I think he said it was the uh, fourth time. Because after every year that he lives, he he goes to see if he's strong enough to fucking save Japan from this volcano, and he fails every time. So he just reverts back to four years ago. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cool. So he can control time with his second power. He can do fucking anything with the psychic power. He Obviously, is, he can't he's... stop the fucking volcano. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, everything else. He yeah. could do. Now, with that same theory, could he just pause a specific like, part of the volcano and just leave it alone? You would think that. I mean, that would not. be that'd be something. It would be semi reasonable. But then he dies in the future, and then fucking all of a sudden the volcano erupts, and it's like, oh, I'm dead. Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I oh. guess his goal is to just permanently stop it. Yeah, I'm not alive to give a fuck. Uh, okay, that's interesting. I, I might have to check that out at some point. I probably should. I don't know. Um, but, yeah. Okay, so, uh, I'm thinking about Hero Academia. Here we go. Third season of fucking My Hero Academia. Fucking, still, yep, starting off fucking pretty solid, uh, and fucking was the other person was kind of a catch up kind of the obligatory beach episode deal. Um but not much is going on. 
And then now oh, there's summer camp. Yeah, they're in the the tra- training camp and shit. Oh yeah, that, that's that's the second episode. The first episode didn't have all that. First episode's in the swimming and fucking around really. Second episode's been on. Oh yeah, now we're doing training. Woo! Um so yeah, now the training camp thing starts. Uh we go, get together. And now they're on a giant I mean basically a giant ranch in the middle of nowhere. Where the two cat girls, which I thought was kind of cool, there's fucking cat girls, cat girl oh, yes, superheroes, yeah. and I'm just like, okay, 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 yeah. Apparently one of the cat girls is like 40, and, or something. She's old, but like she doesn't I, I look old at all. Ridiculous. Yeah, she she looks like she's in her fucking 20s or some shit, and it's like, oh yeah, she's fucking 40. Uh, what? <laughs> yep. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, they're there, they're fighting all of the stuff that she's basically spawning, I guess her abilities are virtual, or she's making monsters, and they're fighting through it, to the objective, which is the clubhouse. Uh, anyway, there's backstory of the little kid that's with them, um, fucking Minoko is trying to peep in the bath scene, obviously, with the shit kicked out of him, um, and then, like, kid, after smacking him, I mean, that thing starts falling down too. And, you know, um, our, you know, All Might V2 boy, um, is it, uh, Deku or, you know, yeah, it's you know. Deku. I know it's Deku, but I mean, his, his real name. Midoriya, there we go, saves him, and fucking, you know, so I wanted to point out, like, that one girl was trying to, the, the cougar hardcore on all of the young boys, right? Well, like, yeah. Midoriya is just sitting there the whole time in a fucking towel, like, ripped yeah, his like shit. That, yeah. And I'm like, what are you, are you, put clothes on, question mark? Are you just gonna roll around fucking with your dick hanging out? Like, yeah, you just saved the kid, sure, but now you're sitting there getting told a story. It's gotta be fucking cold in there. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Like, that was just I the know. only thing. And then, like, the, the blonde hair chick doesn't even go ham on him. Like, he is fucking ripped. <laughs> he know. is so goddamn ripped. <laughs> it's Shit's hilarious. ridiculous, dude. Yeah. So, anyway, you just have the little kid's backstory. Well, and as you see in the fucking intro, like, Midoriya's gonna save the kid. The fucking villains are gonna attack soon. That's the end, and yeah. Very fun time, he's. Very, very fun time. Alright, from there, boom, going on to Devil's Line. Uh, Devil's Line is... odd. Uh, it's a story about vampires, and how... And this is kind of like on the flip side of some of the vampire fiction, or some of like what people think. This is a, a, a traditional like, view of the movies of vampires. But the vampires, like... Fucking, when they suck blood, gives them an ultra, like, super erotic stimulation, and, like, you know, heals them, it fucking gives them ultra erotic stimulation, and it, like, it's a, it's like a drug, it's like, I think the, the anime says, it's like when a normal person fucking does a drug, or like cocaine or something, except it's three times worse and more addictive than, like, a normal person doing drugs. So yeah, freaking blood in the side of blood, just blood in existence in this anime is all bad. Like, you're bleeding, fucking, you're just gonna get shit on by a vampire. Anyway, uh, main character is this chick, she's been going to school with this dude, turning down this dude. Apparently, said dude is a vampire. And he's been resisting fucking, like, biting her, sucking her blood, fucking her dead corpse, and like, all this shit for so long. And, like, he starts to semi lose it, doesn't. Uh, the police steps in because he's been mass murdering people. He's been mass murdering specifically women instead. <coughs> so he's been serial killing other women so that he doesn't fucking kill her because he loves her or something. Wow. Anyway, fucking black haired police dude comes in and is like, yo, you, you gotta come with me. <laughs> You're gonna lose his shit. Cause he almost, it looked like he almost lost his shit on the chip, but he was about to get hand by it. And anyway, they, they kind of fight it out. Um, and, you know, plays the wins, whatever. The dude gets knocked the fuck out, and he's put in custody. Uh, and then at the end of the first episode, police dude fucking takes her back to her house, 
just realizes this whole time of spending time with her, she's bleeding from her lip. And then you find out he's a vampire. Because he fucking, like, pins her against the wall, shoves his fucking knee in her crotch, and then starts fucking making out with her. And I was like, whoa, we're gonna go here? Sweet. Immediate rape. I love it. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, I need to watch this. <laughs> and then, like, in the second episode, she's just fucking dreaming that the, they're fucking hardcore with, like, blood included. And I was like, whoa. All right. This is the fuck scene. Sweet. <laughs> Uh, but it turns out to be a dream, and so basically, she kind of is falling for this guy, and she's been afraid of dudes all her life, I'm guessing, if some dude kind of comes up, and, like, she's never liked any other dudes, but no, she's falling in love with this dude, this dude's actually falling in love with her as well, um, and, yeah, uh, fucking, he's going out on the balcony all the time, and he's, like, going to stalker-ish level, fucking, things um yeah but let me just like drop this bit of information at some point in the episode he gets her fucking blood on him and then like as he's like he's like oh shit i need to clear this off as he's looking it off he like goes and he starts taking off his pants in the alleyway i'm assuming he just fucking beats his meat while he's fucking going to town on the blood on his hand Oh my god. Because it smells and tastes so good. It reminds me of the fucking Evangelion masturbation scene from Shinji in the hospital. And you're just like, oh boy. <laughs> but like it, like it says, it's fucking ultra sexual, fucking unresistible. Like, that's what blood does to them. So I'm like, yo, is this man about to just beat his fucking meat in the alleyway? <laughs> <laughs> while treating, like, you know, licking her blood off his hand. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, he stopped the, the fucking, there was a teacher who she went to see. He stopped the teacher from over here. Uh, so far, this anime is, like, super romantic and just full of, like, almost rape scenes. Like, everybody's trying to rape this shit. <clears throat> so, yeah. It's definitely weird. It's kind of interesting. I like it. It's definitely a mature anime. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. And then on to Darling and the Franks. Um, here we have, the last few episodes have been about, uh, fucking Zero Two going in, into a stampede. The backstory of Zero Two and, um, Hero, um, which apparently knew each other from childhood. He just didn't remember anything from before. I wonder why he didn't remember. Probably because they, they dosed him for the drugs and shit. Hey, well, they cool they ones. said that they cleared his fucking memories. Mm, that's so true. It was, they were just like, erase it. Yeah, even though obviously you didn't erase it. Because human mind is one of those things. You can't fuck it. Well, okay. I guess they suppressed it. Ow, 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 you little shit. What are you doing, huh? Maybe mm-hmm. a little shit. But anyway, yeah, they... Darling and Frank's been solid. Um, and then we get to the part where now Zero Two is fucking left. Like, that, they, they're all of his friends, or whatever, his squadmates are trying to keep yeah. them apart. And they succeeded, basically, even though they gave in to the fact that their love was strong and all of his evil and was going to be Also, it didn't help that fucking Zero Two went green eggs in him and like, almost it beats the shit out of all of them. We'll say almost killed, but it just beats the shit out of all of them. I, I mean, it's, see him. Zero Two kind of fucked up, though. Because, like, it, uh, it, she it, she was living her life, like, uh, to meet up with this dude that uh, she met as a kid. Didn't realize who that was, and then, uh... I, I guess so, um, I... Killed the, almost killed him. Yeah. But anyway, they... They had their fallout, and... Now here, like, fucking, what's her name, uh, Ichigo confessed his love to him. He doesn't love her, though. He loves Zero, too, and he always has, and probably always will. Fucking love triangles, squares, fucking hexagons, pentagons? I don't know. Because, like, fat dude loved the one chick, and the one chick kind of likes Mitsu, Mitsu, I'm just going to call it, I think it's Mitsu, I don't know if I'm Mitsu, and uh, uh, uh I wouldn't really call it a love square. There's four people, but they're not uh not all Well, Goro likes 
fucking Ichigo. So that's that's four. That's a square, mate. And yeah, well, Goro, Goro yeah, but... doesn't like it's, a, it's not a square totally because Goro doesn't like anybody. So it's a triangle with an arrow pointed to it <laughs> for some reason. There we go. It's, it's what it is. Yeah. It's this misshapen open Cat! box. Oi! Because there is there is no full circle there. Bad. So trying to come up there. We're being a little shit. Anyway, so yeah, it's it's fucking. There's a lot of brand new shit. There's a lot of things. It was funny because the darling <sighs> and the shit. The darling and the Frank's um Facebook shared a picture that showed a who likes who thing. Apparently Mitsuru likes uh Hiro. So like I don't know if they're going gay there or what. And then the one glasses chick likes Ichigo. So yeah, no, there is like a lot of weird shit going on. <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought they were just dudes being dudes and girls being girls, but if, I mean, if they like each other to that level, okay. Well, because he said he wants him to pilot with it, and like, they can't pilot unless they're like, do the fucking ass and face thing. Good point. Good point. Which is also oddly sexual. Like, I got re- over that really quickly. I was like, oh no, it's super sexual. And then it just kind of went away from that super quick. At like, first, I thought it was super itchy, and I was just like, no. <laughs> It's actually very plot heavy, and things get serious. But anyway, enough about that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I still haven't touched that fucking sword on our line. Uh, it's the only. The real I think, question is, do we want to touch it? That's the only new one I haven't touched. I want to touch it, even though the main character is all pink and she has a P90, which is one of my favorite guns, by the way, and it's all pink. And that kind of hurts me on a fucking like fundamental level. Um, but anyway. Uh, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I want to watch that and get into it because, like, I am the king of anime here on this show. So, like, I need to. I mean, I'm well above, I think, everybody else that I know is watching anime this season. And I mean, being well above, uh, like everybody else, in, like anime and shit, that, that would that would give you the privilege of skipping over a sort of online anime. Well. The pr- the privilege of skipping so- over Sword Art Online anime is just that you don't want to see trash. Oof. Ah. Uh, God. Anyway, but, uh, Persona 5 the animation. So here we have the video game kind of condensed into an anime. Um, I'm not familiar with the games or the game, but it seems like from what I, little I saw, some of my friends playing on Twitch, it's following the game pretty well. What the fuck is my turn? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. It's pretty good so far. Cat's gonna get its ass beat. Um, but it's all pretty good so far, and I'm enjoying it. I think it'll be pretty solid in the season. Uh, it's, it, I don't know how to explain it. So, uh, the main character is the, the life where he, he's, he was damned for something he didn't do. It's also kind of like doing dream sequences and stuff. He was caught for stealing stuff. You know, he was police question him, he questioned him some shit. And that's kind of where we're going with the dream sequence past stuff. And it's just kind of reliving his past. It's talking about how, basically how the game works. This is the real world, and then there's the alternate world, or whatever the fuck it's called. And it's, uh, it's just like, like the game, where it's going in between the two. Um, and that's what they're doing. They're going to have a fight and learning fucking everything. Learning their, they're getting their powers with the first couple episodes and fighting. So far, they don't have any weapons. They're just using their pers- their personas or whatever, which is like the magic behind the uh, their abilities. Which in the game, I don't think you get until later on. So anyway, so yeah, that's 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 first. Um, oh, I they got those immediately. Ah, uh, maybe. Uh, they haven't played fucking games. So I have no idea. You have to ask him. <laughs> That's actually paid for some. Of course he did. He plays all the RPG games. I guess. It just doesn't seem like he's out. But anyway, uh, do you have a... Do you, can you cover fucking the... It's called the... Second season of the Seven Deadly Sins. I'm not caught up. No, fuck's sake. I've really had to piss this whole time. 
but I'm the only <laughs> one that's watched most of these. So, like, I have to stay here. I don't get a fucking choice. Uh, yeah, nah, you, you can go for Caligo. I will, exactly. Except, I, it's just gonna butcher it and it's gonna kill me. Yeah, hopefully you don't do that. I don't know. It, it, it is you. You did miss the love triangle. The oh, most obvious love triangle, the one time. And I will you, never I forgive mean, you. you. You have a wireless headset. Why don't you just go pee while you talk about it? I, I will, but, like, I have to mute it or else it's just like... I'm streaming piss out. Congratulations. So anyway. Uh no, uh so in the second season of Sunday Sins, uh Meliodas and all then I guess complete their power up. Uh <coughs> we got the story being told where about Vaughn and his father, which is the werewolf man. Um let's see, Meliodas fucking goes and beats up. Seven Deadly Sins, the Sin of uh, Truth, or the, the Ten Commandments, whoops, I don't know what it the uh, Ten Commandment, Commandment of Truth, um, good stuff named Old Man, basically, is what it seems like. And the, he basically shows the old man and the one weird chick with the magic that brought everybody back from the dead. Um, Elaine came back to life. He went to go fucking fight or fuck with Bond. Uh, Wait, Al- Elaine's alive again? Goddamn. He, 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 yes, the fucking chick revived everybody, like a lot of people. And what that is, is like, they're revived with all of their regrets or whatever. Basically all of their like, malice and stuff is amplified. So my Elaine's like jealousy and all this other stuff's amplified. She's trying to kill Jericho. Um... Bond loves her anyway, like, doesn't show her any sort of, like, show any sort of non-trusting or unfaithfulness, because that, the chick, is the commandment of faith or something like that, something, I don't know, something like that, where, like, it's, un- it's devotion or something, and they, so he trusts her or whatever, and I don't know what would happen to him if he didn't trust her, but her power didn't like, go off because he trusted her like, all the time. Oh, it burns out people's eyes. There we go. So they like, lose faith or stop trusting. That's what it is. And so that's what happened. Um, so that didn't happen to her or him. And yeah. They're fighting. Um... He uses his fucking hunt power and steals the power of them. Beats the shit out of the old man. Dude, again. <laughs> was just shit talking. Um, he ends up escaping after he like, beats both of them a little bit. And now he's doing with the backlash of his body not being able to handle all the power he stole. And now Jericho's got to carry them all for the truth. Uh, that's the end. Of that episode. Met up, started making out. They were fighting. She tried to kill him or something. They kept trying to kill him. He just didn't die. That stuff. Oh, they were try they tried to they pulled his soul out of his body, tried to eat his soul, um, and then Zivago, which is his I guess it's called the dad, the, the werewolf man, swapped places with him and saved his life by him getting eaten instead of Juan. So Juan and survived. And went back to his body. And then all the rest of the stuff happened, and it's just like, well then. And that's where the end of that. Oh, Caligulus, oh god! Do you, you, want me, you, you, do you just want to go to the bathroom, come back, and then talk about Caligula? No, I'm gonna go for it, <laughs> okay. talk about it. Alright, so fucking first episode, uh. Just your average fucking school day. Uh, the the character is kind of like Trooper, fucking philosophy nerd AF. And then, uh, so, some weird shit happens. Uh, p- people, uh, fucking killing each other out of nowhere. Some people not being able to recognize this because they, they haven't had the veil torn for them. Um, fucking there's, then there's a dude with the fucking, uh, the, 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 the pistol. Fucking s- and saves the m- main character. Gets him the fuck out of there. Fucking no real explanation other than something to do with uh, you and the the anime description saying that they're in an alternate universe and shit created by you. It, it's not you, it's you. Mew? It's you. 
it's you it is. They say it new, it is actually the learn. It's the Greek alphabet for the U's and the U's. Okay. Er, phonetic. Well, it's the other things, but Yeah, but it's yeah. like. M- Majority of the people in this fucking world are fake as fuck. Yeah, well, the, the entire world, as of the second episode, is fake as fuck. Yeah. And then there's like a, there's a bunch of people that that uh, have also had the veil torn. They're fucking scattered around. They're they're like running around and shit, fucking trying to escape it, trying to escape the the town. And it's like, oh hey, uh, yeah. This we haven't created anything past this point. Um, I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, please call. Or a, support. you have to uh, download more, buy more DLC, please. <laughs> Basically, this is. I'm sorry, but this is a locked DLC area. So uh, somehow they're in a computer thing, and you were uh, yeah. <clears throat> incorrect. The main character does like philosophy, but he's just barely getting into philosophy. He actually likes psychology. A lot. He like he's oh. a psychology and philosophy. He's just like a really fucking weird dude. <coughs> like I don't even know how he was friends with those weird those other dudes because like he would basically speak complete non English to them. In like hey, that's, such a that's relevant what thing. Does. Well, <laughs> no, yes and no. Like I can even I can understand church or so mostly. Like, that guy just started saying random shit in the middle of nowhere. Cat, what are you doing? Basically. But I mean, that... I think that basically <coughs> comes up everything, though. Eh, good enough. Uh, there's Pretty Derby, which is the other thing that I need to start watching. Um, so, let's see. Nothing else for me <clears throat> until we get to Shoujo Hore. Anything else for you? No? Alright, so Maho Shoujo Ore, or fucking the other magical girl, anyway, is the story of a magical girl who, well, in the beginning, wished she was a magical girl. Um, and some weird, it looks like, it seems like a Yakuza dude, I don't know. Um, came into their life looking for her mom, and then her mom tells her that, hey, she was a magical girl, question mark. Um, and apparently her mom has been a magical girl up until recently, and she threw out her back. So, there's demons, well, at first they were saying that he just needs help, you know, from random shit, and, like, they totally don't fight demons and stuff. Uh, and then, like, oh no, a demon appeared. But anyway, so they decide that, hey, this girl can fucking become a magical girl because she has the heart power or whatever. Um, long story short, the dude that she loves, which is her best friend's brother, keeps getting abducted or almost abducted by demons, and now she turns into a magical girl. Uh, the catch, though, the magical transformations is she transforms into a dude. I love the way the anime responds to it, though, like, the way the, uh, the fucking Yakuza dude is like, well, isn't a man the best, you know, aren't men better at fighting than women? And I'm like, well, you're, you're fucking right there. So, you know, it's like, yeah, you'll you give him the power, but, uh, you know, she thought she was going to be a girl and stuff. I love how, like, some of the magical items. Here's this magical item. That's a fucking pistol. Not, not like that, but like, uh, like the the first one thing that they said was like, "Hey, you use your hairpins." Fucking throws it. Yeah, That's fucking great. grenades. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, the, the fucking uh, the rod. It's like, hey, this this rod doesn't do anything. It, it's like, yeah, you just gotta beat the shit out of it. <laughs> it's just like blood and shit everywhere. Yeah, it, it's it's fucking hilarious. Though. I'm liking it a lot. <laughs> Like, um, what, what, what is the rod supposed to do? Nothing but hit those with it. <laughs> Basically. There's a little container on it, you can pull it with a bunch of But no, yeah, exactly. and the second episode rolls around. Fucking, the main character is saving the dude again. There's some creepy person in the shadows that's watching them and he's like trying to take the guy away or something like that. And then now the other girl, her best friend, becomes a magical girl, a magical guy. And apparently, she loves the main character, which I figured was going to happen. 
and how they get their powers by shouting the name the one they love. It's just like, oh no. <clears throat> so yeah, they that that's how that's going. It's it's funny. it's weird, and I knew it was gonna be funny. It's fucking. I, I love that the uh, the idol with the black hair, the fucking the pretty dude's boy. brother. I mean, yeah, the pretty boy. Fucking, uh, he's scared of the main character pretty much. No, he's scared of the main character when she's a chick. But as a dude, like he was blushing and shit. So maybe he likes men? Question mark. That's that's what it seems. I mean, fucking uh, the the sister loves uh other girls and the, so the brother loves other dudes so uh this it, it all correlates all makes sense yes sure good enough uh anyway so from that on to golden comedy now here's an interesting anime that's like super brutal i guess um main character is a soldier in the russian japanese war is dubbed immortal sugimoto uh has a shit ton of battle scars but basically, every time he's fought, I'm guessing, because it doesn't need the backstory, he just fucking charges at people and just goes green eggs in hand. He fucking tore across a battle line, like, after a cannonball exploded near him and, like, fucked him up. He was, like, bleeding. But he, instead of, like, deciding to die, he just fucking, or no, I think he got shot in the shoulder or something, but instead of deciding to die, he just fucking got up and sprinted straight into their, uh, like, their fighting an uphill battle, which, if you know anything about fighting in hills in the high ground. Sure, it's a joke in fucking the Star Wars movie, but it's real. I mean, fighting in trench warfare like that. Fighting uphill battles, you know, it's an it's actual tactical advantage. And it's always very much frowned upon, because it sucks. <clears throat> anyway, dude charges up the fucking hill, gets inside the trench, and just starts slaughtering everybody. And I'm like, well then. So anyway, He's, he's fucking somehow he's back into like the war finish. He's retiring. He I'm guessing he's he's he talks about his friend had a girl who wanted to like go find gold for while he was trying to make money for his friend. He was saying that he would sort of, you know oh yeah to talk to Kate will survive. So he's trying to make money for his friend's girl or something or for his friend's family because he's got a wife and kids. Um, so it's kind of good on him. Uh, he's paying up for gold. Some dude that he's with tells him a story, with like a tall tale, about a prisoner who supposedly tattooed like 25 men with a map uh, where he hit his fucking ultra treasure, which is supposed to be like millions of square you know, worth. Um, AKA a lot of money and a lot of gold. So, that dude tries to kill him. Uh, Sumo kills that dude. Finds this little girl, which is an Ainu, which I'm guessing is like basically their Indians or whatever, or their, whatever the fuck they are. Um, you know, nomadic village people type thing. And, uh, kills a bear. <coughs> kills, well, kills a regular bear by himself. And then kills, uh, or she kills the bear for him. And then he kills the ultra murder bear. Like, there's some sort of Japanese folklore included in this. Like, the girl's telling a story about how when a bear eats a person, it fucking becomes, like, an uber bear that just thirsts from our blood kind of deal. And all stuff. And, you know, dude kills that. Uh, they skin the guy. His skin, apparently they uh, figured out the skin of all these, these tattoos were made in a way that all the prisoners would have been killed. Like, they stop at lines, like where somebody would basically slice up the body to cut it into, uh, or slice up the skin to skin like an animal. Damn. And so, they cut the dude's skin off, and now they have part of the map. And so they're searching for the rest of the map. And, so, on the second episode, they find a dude, or they're looking for a dude in the town, they're getting followed by a dude. They have the traps that they was taught to set up for strangling squirrels. <clears throat> um, and they use it to find the dudes and start strangling the dudes. Apparently, like, the dude made a deal beforehand. He would catch all of the people so that he could find the treasure, um, and, you know, take some of it. And, like, he would give it to her because apparently the prisoner dude killed her dad. And, um, she, 
he would uh it would get the map and the treasure and then the dude would be put to death so she could, you know, have her vengeance. But she can't kill anybody because she doesn't believe in anybody. Well, beginning of this episode, figure out that uh, they made a deal where Sugimoto's not allowed to kill anybody. <laughs> and so, like, he's going soft on people-ish. <clears throat> well, first dude they capture gets fucking his brains blown out while the chick's trying to draw his map. Um, by somebody that's also from the fucking army that Sugimoto realizes is from, like, the Immortal Seven or whatever. Basically some super special unit of just complete badasses that uh, is supposed to be the best in the army or whatever. Um, he tangles with that dude. He fucking destroys that man. Um, but again, the chick stops him from like, killing him. Um, dude ends up fucking trying for it again and like falls off, gets his fucking head split open. It looks like a rock on the way down. Falls into the river or whatever, gets picked up by his by his friends. Well, now his fucking regiment knows that, hey, he just got fucked up because of that same thing. So I'm sure now they're gonna be after him. Meanwhile, another prisoner shows up, uh, one of the ones with the fucking markings. And, while they're tangling with that guy, he's a super escape artist. Apparently he's got all sorts of stuff shoved in his stomach. Because this man just starts, like, puking up little fucking paper wrap packets. Of, first a razor blade that he cuts himself out with. And then next a bullet. <laughs> like, the fuck, mate? Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, like, they end up falling. Those two dudes end up like, fighting. Falling. Um into the river while a, a super cold snap that like turns from whatever the cold it normally was from like zero to negative 30 or something and like it, which I assume is Celsius because Japan and it was like so such a hard freeze and so quick that it actually would split the wood in the trees in the forest like, because the, the water would freeze basically instantly and I'm like that's kind of interesting if there's a place and that actually happens over there um, but yeah, so they end up finding themselves fighting for their lives, and they figure out they have to work together to survive, uh, because if they don't, they will fucking die. What's interesting I'm learning from this anime is, like, lots of survival things. <laughs> I mean, there's some, some real-world survival stuff in there, and I'm like, huh, interesting. It's just kind of cool. That's basically an adventure of the soldier and the high new chick just trying to get the map and trying to figure out where the treasure is and all that shit. It's I, pretty I, good. I've, I've added this to my watch list. It sounds very entertaining. It is actually pretty good. Um, and then I'm moving on to Uchu Senkan Tiramisu, or Space Abership Tiramisu. This is a seven minute episodic fucking just random comedy thing. It, it's it's like Space Dandy, but seven minutes, basically. Except the fucking main character is the pilot, pilot of like a mobile suit. It's... It, I, I thought it was going to be good. I saw with the tiramisu thing, I was like, oh, it's, uh, it's kind of a joke. But hey, I mean, it's still got robots and shit, right? Yeah, and then I saw it with seven minutes. I was like, okay, this is bad. And then I watched the first episode, I was like, oh no. Oh no, this is kind of bad. I mean, it's not, it's not bad, it's funny. Um, and it's decent. It's just like, not my style, but I, I still like watching it, so I, I don't know. It's good enough. Uh, somebody told me to watch fucking The Regenesis, which is actually, it's actually, it's just like Fist of the Blue Sky, but it's Fist of the North Star Regenesis. That's what it fucking is. I didn't realize until I started watching it, until the main character's like, I am so and so of the 58th North Star, whatever, like, fist. And I'm like, oh no, this is fucking fist of the North Star. <laughs> Umaiwa Shinaru. <laughs> uh, we are already dead? Like, that was one of the first episodes. Some dude said something like, you are already dead. He didn't say that Umaiwa Shinaru said this is something else. Um, cause the main character had poked them in the skull, like, twice really quickly, and their fucking heads swelled up, and they just fucking died. <laughs> well, the fucking, like, vast, like, cardiovascular system exploded. Just bled. I was hoping their heads would just pop. 
because their brains swelled, but that didn't happen. It, yeah. it sounds like brutal comedy. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> kind of is. Um, yeah. And then down here we have Jushiki Pandora, which I really like. Which they don't know when it comes out randomly. Uh, there's already been two episodes that dropped. It's pretty cool to do. So they're in a world where they, uh, humans of this time made a quantum fucking fusion reactor. And that's all cool and dandy, but when they lit it up, uh, it fucking did some weird shit and caused some sort of resonation on like a particular wave that ended up causing everything to start evolving. So, like, plants and stuff, it caused non-organic matter to evolve uh, in AIs and stuff. So, what ended up happening in the backstory is is that the environment started producing fucking, like, metal things, started having basically babies, and there's an entire new organism that continues to evolve, and it's, like, metallic. It's, like, robotic, but also organic at the same time. It's fucking weird. Um, and it's ever evolving much faster than humanity can evolve now, which humanity is one of the biggest, you know, best traits of humanity is we evolve incredibly fast to fit any sort of need. And it's, it's accurate. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> he, uh, the main character is the scientist who was a part of that deal, um, and he's been working on a hyperdrive. Well, first up, he's like blowing up hyperdrives in the middle of the desert, and then like it shows, you know, the I'm assuming this is China is where this happens, the whatever special zone of China or something that sounds Chinese, and all these names sound Chinese. Um, fucking is trying to they they still have the quantum generator going. They're trying to keep the last like city of humans alive because humans are going extinct. And it's like this super big Chinese city. Well, they're running around. Apparently, the princess uh, of whatever the country is, or whatever it's called, the, the China place, is uh, out on doing something, like checking out something, or examining things in person. And then they're attacked by a giant crab monster that's uh, well, trying to kill them because it's one of these evolved beings. Except, well, it's giant. Well, they have these fucking, like, mobile suit type things that are half humanoid, uh, half being like torso and guns, the bottom half or whatever their movement is, is just like, in that one they have, uh, I think treads or wheels, and then like, one of the fucking, um, two bounty hunters pop up, and that's the two of the people in the main story line, pop up, one is a chick that flies and shoots, and the other dude's a sniper that uses a humanoid fucking vehicle that turns into a sport bike. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, what? <laughs> it turned into a sport bike? What? But anyway. Um, so, move forward to the next episode. Well, main character, uh, actually, no, I think the ending of the episode. Main character throws his hyperdrive into his mech, trying to, he, his original plan is to go take the hyperdrive, activate it, and go all the lock bar. Because the two giant crab monsters combined together into one giant crab monster. Fucking evolved on the spot and fucking connected and became a super giant crab monster. Uh, that started spinning a fucking two part chemical that exploded and like killed out most of their forces. So anyway, he's like, well, there's nothing we can do. They can't penetrate its armor. It's not dying. I'm going to go take this basically bomb strap to my chest and go uh, insert it and try to get out. As he leaves his uh, quote-unquote sister or family contracted member to die. They have some sort of weird contract relationship thing. Hard to explain. But uh, long story short, the drive spins up, reacts with the like monster doing something, but also reacts with him there as some sort of, like, secondary piece to the drive. So the drive's been blowing up the whole time. He believes he had everything correct. Apparently, like, there was a catalyst missing, and the catalyst was a human being. So somehow, with him being in the cockpit, him controlling it, the drive spins up, and then causes the robot that he's piloting to transform into a humanoid version with, like, retarded amounts of power, and then he takes down the, the super crab monster somehow. 
Uh, and then I forget to say it passes out. So the next episode ends up inside the place. You find out he was one of the original scientists that killed the world in the first place. He was one of the scientists that spun up the generator and basically caused all the problems in the world. Um, they're just kind of doing that, eating all those other things. Uh, basically he gets accepted back into the city. And then he reactivates the generator for some reason and, like, basically says that he wants to destroy the current world. But the other dude's like, I don't trust you. Fuck this up in the first place. It's your fault. Everything's like this. <clears throat> and, uh, then the main character's like, yeah, no, I don't want to protect the world. I want to destroy it. And I was like, wait, what? Are you evil all along? Question mark, question mark, question mark. And then he's like, I want to destroy the current world and rebuild a new one. Where, because if we don't, humans aren't going to survive very long, which is correct. So, that's, that's basically what we're talking about. It's interesting, actually. It's kind of, kind of cool. Kind of weird. Kind of interesting in this. So that is, uh, I believe, the end of the uh, anime talk show here. We covered a lot of shit. Fucking two hours worth. Oh, so much anime. I'll be glad when some of this stuff finishes this season. Jesus. Oh, yeah. So yeah. much to watch. Dude. I'm going to have to cram my Saturdays and Sundays with anime, probably. It, it used to take us, like, 45 minutes to do this. Well, yeah, because, like, it's like, oh, look, there's fate. It just does. It, they're fighting. There's, like, very little next to those on the fighting. Things like that. And I want to, and see, like, I'm sitting here talking, and I'm going over everything, and, like, I have so many of these anime on my list, and I still want to take on Pretty Derby and fucking Gun Gale. I might drop Gun Gale, though, probably instantly after I watch it. But I, and I might drop Pretty Derby, too. But still, like, so far, yeah. most of these things are pretty good. This fucking spring season is lit, man. Especially the high school DXC. <laughs> I mean, no. Megalobox uh -huh. is the most lit for you, you know. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, high Megalobox school DXC is, is so fucking good. amazing. Yeah. But anyway. So, thank you all for joining us. This has been us on the front table. We're at the Anime Fashion Tuesday. We shall be signing off. You can catch us here weekly at 7.30 p.m. CST. Uh, where we we'll talk about animes on Tuesday and on every other week we have a guest on and usually ask them questions in an interview format to get to know them and to uh, find more reads for everybody else to enjoy. As well as I run a talk show on Thursdays with Rainy Death 909 where we talk about the news. Uh, so we run a news talk show, kind of like your uh, sort of local newscast from one of the local news stations you have. If you're interested in that sort of thing, please tune in. That is from 8 to, well, it starts at 8 or 8.30, or 8 to 8.30, depending on how things go. Um, PNCST, happy Thursday. So again, thank you all for joining us, and have a good night.